6.34, if, um, if I read the clock correctly. And um, guests, as always, most welcome. Um, move on to agenda revisions. Now, at, this is the point where I explain a change that doesn't necessarily have to lock you in. We're experimenting with moving public comments from up front in the meeting to the back end of the meeting, towards the end of the meeting. Public comments and correspondence, I should say. Now, um, I want to stress, this is not in any way a demotion of, of public comments um, or the public itself. From my perspective, the people are why we're here, whether it's old people or young people. We're here for, um, for, for everyone, and particularly those who take the trouble to come here, they do so for a reason, and um, I, I think, I, I hope, I speak for, um, for our colleagues that we honor your presence and the contributions that you make to our work. So um, having you know, uh, laid that out, I just want to let you know, if any of you have come with the expectation that you'd be able to say something up front in the meeting and then be able to excuse yourselves and go about your business, um, you're welcome to do so. And we will still have public comments and correspondence at the end. And um, in addition, if there are, if there are public um, contributions to be made in any of our discussions, those are welcome too. So um, I trust this is understood, and uh, Corinne. I'm not really hearing a reason as to why, because for as much as you are saying it's not to discourage uh, comment or people coming, it certainly seems it. I mean, yeah. if, you know, if, if I hadn't been around board meetings for the past 25 or 30 years, if I was newly getting involved, I'd look down and go, public comment towards the end, I'm not going to go sit through the meeting, or how do I judge when to get up there in order to make comments? So I, I'm a little confused. Yeah, there, there are a couple of reasons, and having to do more with the, um, the logic of the meeting, because a lot of the public comments and correspondence consists also of correspondence that, um, that we receive. And the idea is that having it right before future agenda items helps us to shape the next agenda. Um, whereas if we get this stuff, um, if we get sort of things new or seemingly out of the blue at the beginning of the meeting, um, we, there's nothing really that we're generally able to do during the meeting itself. It's kind of there as this you know, um, amorphous uh, thing kind of uh, weighing, yes. But, but it's, still, it's still at the beginning of the meeting where I think you have much more of a chance for people to get involved. You also have Lisa who takes excellent minutes if you need to refer back to them before making those agenda items as far as what might have gotten mentioned at the beginning of the meeting. But right now, what with an unexpected vote coming up on November 5th, and with additional board members being sought at an upcoming time to finish rounding out the board, it would just seem like you would want to be doing everything you could to encourage people. And for as much as you also have um, public engagement on tonight's list, or there's something in the board packet about it, it just seems just totally bizarre in my mind that it would get pushed to the end of the meeting. Um, sure. Uh, uh, one moment, Rick. Consultation. One second.
Okay, yeah. Um, Deborah is suggesting that we possibly have an agenda revision moving public comments back to its traditional place following agenda revisions so that since we're talking about public comments anyway, we might as well uh, discuss it under that particular agenda item. Um, I think that would just be a motion from the board if the board is agreeable. Okay, Chris moves. Any second? I'll second. Marilyn seconds. Um, board discussion of this. I, I favor public comments at the beginning uh, mm -hmm. for reasons of participation, encouraging participation, because I think uh, putting it at the end as an agenda item, folks may not even show up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have the, the stalwart members who come, like <coughs> Rick, um, and he will, will show up, but others may not. Uh, and I think it helps us to have comment to, at the beginning rather than at the end when we're tired and we want to get out of here, usually. If it's at the very end of the meeting. I mean, that's, that's the way things have devolved over the past couple of meetings, I think. Um, and I, I thought I would really say that we would take comment during the meeting as well as we're pointing uh, discussion items going through the meeting, which I also favor. Okay, thanks. Um, other other opinions, George? I was gonna say, um, it, it was kind of my idea, um, just because we keep getting bogged down. Mm -hmm. um, uh, last meeting, we just got so bogged down, we got nowhere. And we have so many things that we need to focus on right now that my idea was, was kind of to bump the public comments and input to the end for a few meetings so we can get caught up and we can really hammer out the meat and potatoes that we need to, to hammer out in these meetings. Um, and that was, that was the whole reason um, okay. behind the thought. Um, that we just have so many kind of hot topics that we just keep spinning our wheels in. That's all. It's very generous of you, George, to take the heat off me. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, it was my idea. No, I, and I, I think it has merit. Um, before, before we go back to the public, what I'd like to do is, um, are you ready for a vote? Or any other comments on this? I mean, just, just to just really just want to say, we could limit public comments to uh, two minutes per person. I mean, and that would help at least facilitate movement. It would encourage and also dis encourage participation and discourage long-windedness um, or encourage cons being concise. Um, so can you, I mean, I'm not Absolutely. Saying, I'm not to the point of not getting bogged down. We've struggled with the timekeeper idea in the past, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think Scott needs to gavel. <laughs> um, I think the bog down last week was bringing up the BSBA, not the public comments that we've re-brought that up as far as if you're taking the heat. Um, uh, so I, I'm not sure that that was because of people coming in with a public comment as much as a topic that we hadn't resolved. So. Very soon, Rick. Um, Fleur? I, I'm okay with having public meetings at the beginning because people are here already. If we just are good about what they're saying, keeping time, and then having public meetings uh, coming all the way at the end with sort of how we bridge uh, being able to have enough input from the public. I think the part that is blowing us down is that the, the meeting is the meeting of the board to get some work done because we need to catch up and it's, it's the comments in between, like having that conversation back and forth <coughs> is not helping us get the meeting. So we could like just at least agree that for now we'll take public comments at the beginning, public comments at the end, and in the middle the board meets with the leadership team and gets the work done at least for the next couple of meetings. Instead of the back and forth, I think that would help us just keep the meeting. Because right now we're, we're staying here until 10.30. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to continue this too long either because we're making our meeting. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, uh, should we vote then? Oh, Vera, yes. Yeah, um, I agree with for, um, uh, with having the um, public comments at the meeting in the end. Um, my preference would be that the public comments do set the tone of the meetings, mm -hmm. and um, if we could not let ourselves get engaged in a back and forth conversation, listen to the public comments, and then get to our business of uh, what's on our agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, Dorothy? Oh, I, I agree with four 
Vera, mostly what I'm thinking is it should be labeled public comments, not public conversation. What I'd like to hear is what the public has to say about when we get ready to vote on something, you know, a one minute, have you thought about this or whatever, mm -hmm. but we don't respond. Mm -hmm. They just give their ideas and then if we, get, if it looks like it's, well, we might change our mind or something like that, yes, but um, try to <coughs> make ourselves not converse. Mm -hmm. I think that would be good. <coughs> Ready for a vote. Okay. Um, the motion is to have public comments brought back to the beginning. Am I right? Okay. So, Jan? Can we amend that to have a time constraint to that? Um, what I would prefer is for that to be at the chair's discretion. Okay. If that's all right? Yes. Thanks. All right. Um, all in favor? of bringing the public comments, restoring the public comments to their traditional place up front in the meeting. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Okay, great. Rick. I mean, this is actually a good example of why you don't put it at the end right here. I mean, this vote was taken before I could even speak and voice what I thought about that vote as well. I mean, there's more than just future event agenda items that come up in public comments. Mostly, people come to meetings to comment on something that might be facing that agenda, and they should be heard. And George, I know that's an inconvenience. Most meetings, no one will show up. You know, you know, but when you get items that are of importance to people, and it's important enough for them to show up, they have to be heard. I don't care how much of an inconvenience it is. I've been doing this for 30 years, too, in planning, where I've run meetings and many public meetings, and sometimes they run long, but you have to hear them out. This is all about the public. That's what you represent. And the second you start shutting them out for convenience, you are no longer doing your job, and you're also undermining their confidence in you as a board. They will not feel represented. I mean, I know personally, you know, I actually care a lot about our communities. I care a lot about our schools. I take a lot of time, and you don't like my tone a lot, but I'm upset with what's going on here for good reason. The point is that we bring good points, and you, it's your job to really listen to that. And I don't care if you respond, you're, that's, you're handling that well, you know, but, but you need to consider what you hear from every person, both sides. That's your job. You represent the public. You do not, they're, you're not their lord. So you really have to hear those ideas, and this is difficult to let the ego step aside to that. Don't let yourselves, you know, let that inconvenience of the, the pesky public, you know, let you shut them out. There's a hell of a lot more knowledge there than you give credit for at times. It's often more than you've got in some areas. And I'm not, that's not a criticism, but it's because of expertise in communities. So take this seriously. It's very, don't shut people down. Thank you, Rick. David. Uh, Dave Lawrence, Middlesex. I, I like what all you all have had to say, frankly. I think every single one of you have had bits of great points in it. And I understand where some of the frustration comes from, though, in that uh, leaving here at you know 10.30 at night <laughs> um, is, has been for some super long meetings. So I think it would be a terrible idea to put public comments at the end of meetings that are going to be ending at 10 o'clock at night. Um, but as George said, it, would, it was a temporary idea, right? So until things get settled in, and it wouldn't be that all the meetings are ending at 10. But some of that's going to naturally happen soon, too, in that once you have gotten your tours of all the schools done, right, there's 45 minutes out of each meeting that hopefully will not be, we're not going to have a tour every time we go to the same school, right? So. Um, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm mostly I'm in favor. <laughs> too. Yeah. I, I, I want them at the beginning of the meeting, too. But I think that part of this feeling about, oh my gosh, it's been going on for so long, is because it's been this kind of special thing of getting booted up, checking out all the schools that is making the meetings extra long right now. So. Mm. Well, thank you, everyone. This has been a nicely meta discussion of public <laughs> comments about public comments. But um, I think, I think we are, we're at least in a place that will work. So um, 
If there is no objection, should we move on to um, a, a tour of Stephen Dellinger Pate's domain? Well, this is sorry. this is the U thirty two domain. I don't know. <laughs> um, so we're gonna we're gonna do about a fifteen minute walk today. Um, so we're we're gonna try not to do the forty five minute. Um, but we're just gonna see the event space of the school. So we're gonna go through the auditorium and then back through our music space and through the gym. Um, I just gonna point out a couple of things to us at that point in time, but I figured that a long tour tonight would probably not be in the best interest of all the comments that need to be made. So if you guys can join me, we're just gonna head down the hall through the auditorium. Yeah. Tour piece of this by giving you guys an update on the track. So um, that's the other big space. So as of Yesterday, we had a meeting with uh, Du Bois and with Konica, who is the, the subcontractor for the surface of the track, the actual rubberized surface. Konica has informed us that they will not be able to come out until May to complete the track. And so the temperatures required to, uh, to lay down the surface need to be at 40 degrees or better. Um, we told them that, we told them, that October would be tough. Um, and so uh, they have said there's nothing they can do. They won't warranty the track if they try to put it down now. Um, and so um, we, Du Bois is not pleased um, because they fulfilled their part of the contract. They have the, everything is ready to go out there for the surface to be laid down, but it's not going to happen. Um, we understand Konica's um, misunderstanding of Vermont weather. Uh, when they said that they would be back in April to complete the track. And, uh, and we told them that that is very kind of you, but we're not going to blow the snow off of it. And uh, yeah. April is worse than October in Vermont. Yes. Um, and so once everybody around the table stopped laughing at the Konica uh, gentleman, who was very apologetic, but certainly we, um, we held his feet a little bit to the fact that we're not going to be able to have a track until um, we've told them that it has to be in place by June 1st at the very latest. And so uh, they understand that. Du Bois is actually going to work with them to um, hold some of their materials so that they have a, a financial stake in the game to, to get out here and get them done quickly. Um, the one caveat that they gave us is that we had, through the bid process, we were going to end up with a red track. Um, but Konica has said that since they are able to ship um, and, and be able to do things this winter, we will be able to get a black track like we had before. Um, there was an oversight in the bid process where they had bid an, a red track and nobody noticed that in page 145 of the 160 page document. And so, but they're gonna bring us a black track instead. So the, the one payoff, <laughs> which is not very pleasing, but at least uh, we got something out of the whole. Um, if we weren't to go with Konica as our provider, we, there's still no one who would place a track surface at this point in time uh, because of the weather. Um, and our previous bids indicate that there could be anywhere from fifty to $100,000 more to get us another company in here. Uh, there are some others that do the surfaces. Um, and Konica has already certified that this, the work that has been done is at their standards for being able to lay down a track surface. So. Yeah. It's, we're going to, Hank is desperately trying to figure out what the spring uh, season will look like, um, and we just informed him this morning. Um, so he's going to get out uh, some ideas around how we're going to take care of our uh, spring track um, program. And in the meantime, we are going to be able to get um, the final home games for seniors onto the field. So it's going to be, the, they're going to release the track to us because it's still under bond by Du Bois until they complete the job. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to work with them to com uh, be able to get out there and, um, and complete games and do playoff games. Um, so we'll at least get our seniors out there for their senior games in soccer, football, um, and be able to use that space. So sorry, don't like to be the bearer of bad tidings. Um, we told them so kind of thing when they kept putting us off. Um, but you can really blame Thayer Academy in Boston because um, they're where the track company is uh, trying to complete their, their track right now. They were delayed by a lot of rain. So that's interesting because we didn't have hardly any. Um, so. but, um, yes, Doc? What, what's the life expectancy of that? 
20 years. So I think waiting a few months for 20 years is worth it. Yeah, and to have a warranty track and have it yeah, put down yeah. properly is, it's the, the right thing to do, it just doesn't feel good. Yeah. So what I think to do is to about the seniors that they did yes. to finish off the senior year on their, their home field yeah. mm -hmm. for all the sports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been pretty disappointing for some of them. Sorry, Rick? We do a lot of contracting. Well, is there no performance clause in that contract? I mean, I would have had that. If you don't have that, they're going to, they'll defer you to every other job around. You know, we got pushed off. That that hurts. I, that hurts so, our school. Yeah, the, the contract does have to, uh, clauses in it for completion dates, and there are liquidated damages that we can pursue. There with, are penalties. With that divorce. Yeah, there are. I would do that. They, have, yep. they should be held accountable. They yep. promise yeah. to order. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. It's always good to know what's going on, even if it may not be broken. Yeah. Yeah, Jonas, you asked for the bad news, too. Yes, I yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so, um, Stephen, anything else before we move on? Uh, not unless there are any questions. I'm, I'm good. Any questions? Great. So, floor. Book reflection? Oh, yes. So, but actually, I'm not giving it. Oh, oh, I, I am giving it. it. So, I have, I have a quick question. Uh, how much time is allotted for this? Because I'm just thinking how, how many minutes to get each of the rounds. So it's about 30 minutes, if you, if you follow for all together. Okay. Uh, I don't have the breakdown, but I think it was about five minutes per round. Okay. Seems all right, that's what I just wanted correct? to. Yeah. 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 Um, what I wanted to just double check. So, um, Deborah, um, there had been talk about uh, rejiggering the groups and, and making sure we all have opportunities to talk with and work with each other. And I thought I'd written large, big on the board, but I didn't. But if people want to check out their groups and then spread around, and then I actually wrote up a modified version of the Making Meeting Protocol. Um, and perhaps we can have a, you know, one, two, three, four, five groups. And then we can break, I guess. Oh, wait, that doesn't, you know what, the groups are, oh, did I need to number? But you just said one, two, three, four, five. Oh, like one group, second group. Oh, I'm okay. I'm a language person. I'm pushing you. I'm pushing you. We have extra copies of chapter three if anyone needs them. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, yeah. tell okay. us what page you're on. Uh, page 19. Okay, and hold on. Did you, were you here last time you did this? Uh, no. Was, so do you want to know what, the, what you're supposed to say? Sure. Great. So, uh, Tries to keep one from rubber stamping decisions. Yeah, page 21. So in order for PLOs to work effectively, governance teams must lead by providing direction to PLC teams by establishing the district ends. I kind of got an archive of you know, different things that can be reviewed, including, uh, well, just historical information about the board, but things about Robert's rules, and things that you get to know after you've been on the board. For yeah. Okay, it actually seems like people are getting into the to part of talking about the meat of the passages. <laughs> so, <laughs> I still have a teacher. Uh, Okay, so the purpose of using a protocol is it just sort of, protocols help structure conversation, and we use them a lot uh, in faculty meetings or in our, in our teamwork. We also use some very simplified versions of them with our students, because when you follow a protocol, what that does is it helps you sort of go beyond the I really liked it, and it gets you sort of more into the analytical and substantive, sub, substantive thinking about whatever the topic is. So the way the rounds work, they're all the same, is that you choose whoever goes first, and in case anybody's having a hard time deciding who should go first, you can start with the person with the longest hair. Although it's not my favorite one. <laughs> 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 oh, that one goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
So anyway, so you, the first person starts off, um, reads the passage, or the longer passage, shares the gist of the passage, and then what was it about God that, that it spoke to you? What questions did it bring up for you? What was the significance of it to you? What were any aha moments that had? And then the next step is thinking about, okay, then what does this mean for us in terms of our work in education? And then after the first person speaks, then that's the opportunity for the other members of the group to um, respond to and build off of what they heard. Does that make sense? Should I do a check for understanding? <laughs> Sorry. But that is a problem with evening meetings. They're a little crunchy. So anyhow, uh, five minutes per round, given that we had a half an hour. And there are four rounds. So are we all set on who's going first? Yeah. Way too many years in middle school for that, I think. All right, I'm Mark and Ben, go. Thank you. PLOs and governance team. I'm also wondering what other uh, groups uh, can provide support and lead um, and direction to uh, those two uh, areas, um, and whether or not their leadership and their support is uh, positive or negative. Not the way that I chose. One of the things I circled was the right norms, just because if you started with norms and who's ever facilitating the appointment, I think we're getting away from the norms. That to me is also a really important thing because sometimes we do norms at the beginning of whatever cycle. They go on a wall or on a piece of paper. And if you're treated right, you feel comfortable saying, the norms that share the space, we're not seeming to do that. So I think I agree with them. I don't know. Is it a step? I think two. I came for sport knowing nothing. There was like nothing sent out. And then we're going to have emails. Why do we exist? How do we get whether or not you know the student has been successful because I mean, limitless, other than a cookie cutter math. So I could totally foresee that as a problem. I think it's been really interesting because we read this Google article. I was just going to say that. Yes. Our so, so, and I actually, uh, my staff, um, I gave them that, that same, there's a, a huge body of research that went into it. Um, and so I gave this to the staff here at the beginning of the year as well to show them, like, you know, what it all boils down to how people treat each other. And the norms just outline how we treat each other. And so I thought that that was such a, that whole passage just was So I'm gonna go next to me this, of what I underlined on the next page, which I'll the next page, was not necessarily the goal that I chose to share, but we started with some superintendent in that part, but I also see that they, you know, as we start going into that chapter, it talks a lot about how like, the student But you stuck with it, so good. I'm just thinking, you know, going forward. I'm kind of when you're talking about setting up the PLC teams, um, what do do those look like? Kind of fractal versions of this. In other words, it, it, are there little circles that are around the, um, the district, uh, say the, the administrative and team or the teachers and team, and so forth? Um, how does that 
know how does that connect into sort of the organism? I'm not asking you to answer that necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just the question that comes to mind. Um, I came up very well. Yeah, I think Traditionally, educators well, think of themselves as experts rather than equals or partners with parents and family members. Okay, well, no, no, I mean, as a result, we, we this is what I, I think that's that something we really have to be careful of. The parents um, often automatically assume they are an order of smart. Okay. Your second person hasn't started talking. We're still on the first. Well, you might be ahead. I agree with you. I, I had to remind the upper part of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the culture of our place and the organization values are not so as they do check that. Yeah. So that makes me wonder do, do groups like these and meetings like these, do they create a list of different well, well, we And we're doing that. Um, uh, we're just like, because uh, I have the rules of conduct, probably. And, uh, yeah. But like, we're creating a uh, definite set list to strictly for defined norms, increase um, cooperation and uh, people's ability to understand each other. I think theoretically, yes. I think that, um, and, and the previous full board did adopt norms or agreements. Um, it requires not only the adoption of them and the sort of establishment of them, but the commitment to follow them and to revisit them, to evaluate how your group is doing or how you individually are doing in accordance with your norms and agreements. So I think establishing them is the first step and it's important. And then keeping them alive and committing to them is another really important part of my experience. Um, I found that trouble. Well, it's hard to read. It is hard to read. What is that again? And then finding the heading that told you. Um, I wonder what these this is teams <clears throat> would be doing. Like, I feel like we have parent engagement in hiring committees. Um, when we first started developing the standards, there were parents involved in that. Right. Committee, and then I, I know that on the individual level, there are parents and teachers that discuss things. But this seems like it's different, and that they're learning together. And I wonder um, what that would look like for us. We just had a parent or community forum last Wednesday on the hate speech right here, and we had honestly we had like seven staff members, a couple of elementary staff members, a parent. Parents, two parents that don't work in the school, and four people who came with their parents to support that person's interests um, and needs. And that felt like an opportunity for us to learn together, and I sort of feel like that's what this might be. But yeah, school day, they, I know they plan well beyond because they're often presenting it in service, so I think it's really ask them maybe once or twice a year to come to address I think that they'd be open to that. And the other thing is we could, um, we did this with our leadership team. We actually built in continuing education units so that we're not paying them additional hours of time for additional work, but we're saying this is part of the professional uh, growth opportunity. So with this many hours in the patient, which could include a meeting with the board once or twice per year, we will be receiving professional guidance. Yeah, I don't know. So that would be part of that section of the conversation. That's not um, so would be so but, um, but I wonder if it is potentially distorting in some ways. Um, because a school, you know, sometimes it might seem like it works, out, but um, but most of the time, it's not what it's about. So anyway.
And even if you will need like Yeah, this is, these are just questions. They always take hours and go to work. Kind of that. The, the model of kind of thing. That's my goal. Well, in any case, should there, I think you could do feel like with no structure of a top down, do you feel like that kind of circular model is worthwhile um, to continue to look at? I think collaboration is definitely a must. No, Berlin. 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 It was a good one. So, you know, well, actually, what was calling us to task is the system that I, you know, when you're doing it, reserve your own time. I didn't see it, so I'll have to. Yeah, I didn't see it. I'm like, I'm great. But I'm going to just say, I think the state of us right now as a, as a team, I'm going to refer to us as maybe some misfits, and I think not in a sense of misfitting into it. I think we are just all coming together from different communities and building relationships and learning how to work with each other and how to communicate with each other. And I think in the end, I have faith in every one of us that we can get the work done that needs to be done. And I think we will be a very confident group of people that will be successful. It is going to take us a few months to get there, but I do think we will be a board that really that gets the work done and respects each other and respects our administration. Yeah, that, let me respond to that last thing. The respect for the administrators and the teachers, that's, I hope that that's beyond question. But I don't think I, it is I, right now. I don't think we've gained that we need, trust then, and that respect. Then we need to get there. Yeah. The, I, you know, that, and that's what I guess I'm referring to as, as what I tell people, what I tell people who ask me how it's going on this I mean, voyage in the school board is that it's incredibly humbling to be around professionals who, may, who continue to learn and keep up with the literature. It seems like everything are always changing, being flexible, adapting to policies and procedures. And um, I haven't seen a single person rest on any laurels. Um, that's inspiring and humbling. Paragraph right below. Uh, part of it, you know, part of it makes you want to just get the hell out of your way. It's so true. Right at the bottom of 35. Right? Give you what you need. Um, but that's part of what this is about, right? It must be a board, whoever is on the board. From multiple sources. We are representatives of the community. So, we have, God, it's got to be like 10 years ago now um, when Google really just became big. And, and we. We went to um, uh, a technology seminar um, down in Randolph, um, and it was this guy stood on the stage and basically said, "All your kids are going to use their cell phones." They, one of the first things they want to do is to take the easy way out. So they're going to go to the first source. They're going to go to the one that's easy to read and understand. And then what do they do? They, they quote it, and that's why you need to educate around. You know, okay. true well, what this says is know how to evaluate right. and analyze. And that's the, the biggest point yeah. about anything they Navigate. No, we've got one more. We've got two. Yeah, that would be really big. So the government learning team is one of those that have been working together. So school board members and superintendents. Yeah. The school board clarifies the district's purpose by outlining and providing district ends values what we just talked about. So I feel like you know that is we can reaffirm our mission and vision and understand that everything. So if you move all the way down, sorry, that understand that everything is connected to everything else. Yeah, so, if you go, so I'm trying to abbreviate everything that was there. So if the governance learning team understands that, you know, we would understand. So then jump one more paragraph, but not jump one. So the school board hired the superintendent and charges him or her to task. Caring uh, district ends as well as managing the day to day operations of the district and providing leadership. I can tell, right? The track is laid down, right? That's not great news. Right? It's the, you know, it's the less than glowing reports about student performance. Sure, right? absolutely. And like, you know, I'm not in a position where I can tell which, you know, which of your teachers are doing the right job and which are not, you know, where you're falling down and where you're exceeding. I just don't have the tools. 
Right. 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 And that's why they're paid. Yeah, exactly. So thankfully, and that's why <laughs> for me as a board member, the micromanaging, like that, that's not what I want. I, I, I have my own job. I don't need to be micromanaging. And I have my new job where I have to take care of my kids and my household. So I think there is a lot of what we offer them, what we bring to the table as board members. And a lot of it is just our daily experience with our own family, our own kids, our own connections with other kids and what they're going through. And I do think it's important to have the opportunity to bring that knowledge to the table to help formulate other decisions that are being made, whether it's curriculum or a special ed decision or anything. <laughs> oh. But I do think you do bring a lot to the table, even unknowingly. All right, we'll start the final round. Because you asked questions that others might not ask if they're entrenched. So this is specific to a setting or to a group. So we have about five dispositions of behavior. So this is how our group, um, this is what we bring to the table. And then we also had about five operating procedures for, for one particular meeting. So the behaviors and dispositions, um, as well as some of the operating procedures, really could apply to any meeting or group that, that happens in our school. Similarly, as leadership team this summer, we, um, there had been a, a set of norms that had been in practice uh, operating the leadership team in the past, and we reflected on are these are these things that we still subscribe to, that we still believe help us achieve what we're working toward as well. One of the questions I have is, you know, just thinking about the board reports that we do. How is what we share with you helpful in the work that you're doing? Is it helpful? Is there other work information that would be more important for you to know um, in order to do your work as the kind of the big umbrella in the PLO? Um, and that, so I didn't, you know, I felt like there great information in here, like you're saying, a lot of it's common sense on what we should be doing in the schools. Um, and and the work that's a little bit more important to me, because I'm not on the board, is not the board. Um, it's the work of the board and how that relates to our day to day. You and me too. <laughs> Um, and I, I, I've, been, I've been in that situation where I, you know, where the superintendent pretty much got fired right in front of me as we were presenting data, and the board just locked up and just said, "Okay, we're done," kind of thing. And I was in the wrong chair because I was just a principal, but I was presenting data, and so the norms just did. You know, that's not how it should work, and, and people got called for that. And I think that any board that you know establishes good working norms means that it's a safe space for us to be able to bring all of that information in, so that you can deliver it. You know, because. I don't want you making decisions on half the data. That's that's terrible for you. And so, uh, but those norms are going to protect all of us. So. I think they're part of the tool. And I do think it should be a, a safe environment. And the school district is good for me, so you know, really trying to remember that the focus of everything I do is really needs to be on the students and you know, you know that's what we're here for. Um, so this was kind of a good reminder of that for me because it's easy for me to get sort of lost in the IT operations and it's all computers and hardware and software. But then I really like this because this is also sort of what I've seen in, in the last 20 years. It's not enough to just have that knowledge and to go out and do the job and do the same thing for four years and career and that's it. You know, it's really, we really have to prepare our students for, to sort of be you know, ever, ever learning how do they sort of learn how to learn. So I don't know, just, just kind of smoked this, this, um, this might require some, this might be completely uh, not connected and also might require some background information, but um, this reminded me of, yesterday I was in a meeting, 
All right, uh, we're at the time if people want to wrap up their thoughts and trickle back. So, the person who's in the job news all the time said that uh, we were going over things, and uh, they said that like one of the most important things that prepared for this, for this job was 40 years of being a parent, and that like we were talking about how skills and experience um, is more beneficial. We also talked about kind of about our. Um, what, like, uh, because in the job description, it said um, that the, you need a bachelor's degree. They talked about uh, if that was really necessary and if what's more important to demonstration of skills and um, overall communication ability or versus uh, certificate of certain things and how you can measure those different things. And we also talked a bit about the way that um, uh, a wide variety of uh, personal and uh, interpersonal communication skills can work together and that you can gain from daily life to uh, that can better help you be a better fit for the job. Report out. Yeah, we report out. Yeah, yeah. Feeling, so are you going to do that or should I follow up? Or? Gillian, did you, did you want to facilitate the report out or ask for us to do that? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about that part. I got all excited. Uh, people, if one member from each of the groups, I don't know, maybe just to torture Casey, I can say the first one is the shortest pairing. <laughs> 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 uh, and people could report out. I will say facilitating was really super interesting to wander around and listen to the common threads that were going through the conversations. Um, and then hear the things that people pick up. I highly recommend it. It's much easier than facilitating students. <laughs> <laughs> so. Whew, happy to hear that. Uh, somebody from Scott's group, I guess. Mary Lynn? Where is oh, she's back to the bathroom again. Oh, <laughs> what timing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Aaron, would you like to? Yes, I'll start. Um, so I think some of the, the big thing that we talked about was um, I guess just, well, we, we, were, we, we were thinking globally at first, but then we started talking like nitty gritty, like what, what does it really mean? Um, not just understanding these teams, but how, how would you actually make it work with size of our communities? Um, what's the level of parent involvement currently, just generally? I mean, do you see parent involvement sometimes? Low, depending on the um, the uh, um, activity, um, my parents do like to involve in other things. So how can we embrace all of these teams to get enough people um, uh, participating? Um, when we kind of get into how do we how do we make the model work that we have with what's required to something that's a little bit more. Up, 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 the box thinking kind of thing. So, those are the big ideas we talked about. Thanks. Uh, someone from Fuller's group? I think that um, the common thread for us, no matter what we were talking about, was the importance of really building a shared understanding of our purpose and our direction. So, whether it's articulating expectations for students or uh, creating a budget or hiring a superintendent or functioning as a governance task or establishing norms for a particular purpose, knowing what that purpose is and not assuming that everybody knows it, but really unpacking it to ensure a shared understanding is fundamentally important. Okay, somebody from Jonas's group. Yeah, I'm just I'll say we live in a very similar place. Uh, mm -hmm. Jen, we talked about norms. Uh, we talked about um, you know, having the collaborative work that we do be a safe space, right? And that people feel uh, supported and able to, to say what they need to and ask the questions that they need to. Um, and we also talked about uh, the, you know, the necessity for shared vision and shared goals um, and making sure that we create the space to do that while also fulfilling all the functional obligations that we have. Okay. Somebody from Kristen's group? I was elected. Um, 
We had a wide-ranging discussion beginning with um, from a, a member who was new to the board the value of board member orientation and how we might improve and enhance that in the future. Uh, we also spoke about uh, some of the big ideas in relation to the infrastructure that might be required to, or need to be created to operationalize the teams that are associated with the uh, governance learning team and how to implement it and some excitement and interest in jumping right in and getting started, which was very good. And then we segued into a discussion about uh, teams that were very highly functional, such as the Google Research and also norms, uh, which are um, very, very important in terms of ensuring that we can accomplish the goals we set. And we even use a sports analogy. <laughs> and what was that analogy? Oh, well, I'll have to go back and read it for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it doesn't come yeah. trippingly yeah. off yeah. the yeah. time. Teamwork wins championships. Oh, championships. oh, oh. Championships. Talent yes. wins games. Right. Right. Teamwork wins, yeah. Michael Jordan. Right. Yeah. I remember that mm -hmm. one. Yes. <laughs> and finally, did you hear from Dorothy's group? What? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Dorothy. I think our overarching theme was communication, um, and we, we really didn't all hit on one thing. We were all over the place, um, but uh, communication between um, students and teachers um, without expectations, communication um, with parents and teachers, um, and keeping lines of communication open um, and even and trustworthy. Um, and uh, it, was, it was really about communication. We make that happen. Thank you very Thank much, Gillian. <laughs> Most grateful. Thanks. So we're on 4.0 reports. You have the superintendent's report on page two. Um, I might first just ask Deborah if there's anything that you want to highlight particularly or and then go to questions. Yes, and I'll be brief. Uh, but the most important factors, I think, are uh, around communication, speaking of that focus. Uh, first of all, thanks to Mary Lynn for, sorry? No, thank you. Okay. Thanks to Mary Lynn for providing us with the summary of the meeting, uh, which we published on Front Porch Forum. And we'll be looking for another uh, volunteer or a continuing volunteer at the end of the meeting. So you can hold your hands down until later when you're called upon, and then we're looking for those people to jump right out and offer. Uh, but that's very helpful, getting more information out about our materials. Um, and for the first time in a while, I understand, we are going to be uh, uh, permitted to have a full page of the Times Argus periodically every few weeks to feature student activities, uh, not sports related, but educationally related from the Times Argus. And we're thrilled about that opportunity. The editor reached out to us. Uh, so we're already beginning to put that information together and I'll let you know when it's um, available for your review. And then I think most importantly, what we'd like to let our communities know is that uh, at our last board meeting, uh, the board had voted to uh, post a warning in relation to some technical corrections for our articles of agreement. And those are included in my report. They're also posted on the website and they're posted at our town halls, et cetera, to let you know that we will have a vote on the second Tuesday in November, November 6th. Uh, and it's very important that the community comes out to assist us in uh, bringing around some necessary changes so that we will have our town meeting held. I'm sorry, our annual meeting held uh, on a day that's com more convenient for both our citizens and our uh, members of our board, which is the evening before our town meeting. And um, also how we vote for various officers and for our budget uh, is, is also spelled out there. So please take a moment to review the information and mark on your calendars to our community um, the fact that we are hoping that you'll come out and vote on the 6th of November. The votes will occur at your town offices or school. And the warning states which of those is relevant to you personally based on where you reside. If you have any questions, you can call my office or any of our board members. Thank you, Deborah. Mm -hmm. Questions on the superintendent's report? Um, Deborah? Yes. The meeting with legislators, we should yes. um, perhaps. Talk about that? Yeah. Sure. sure. 
so we, um, I have been, I've met with every one of the legislators now, senators and, le and representatives that serve our communities, and um, spoke with them about how periodically the board has interacted with them around um, their own ideas for future uh, initiatives and possibly future legislation. Uh, and I asked, when would be the best time to accomplish that? And they said, really, February is not the best time. Uh, the best time might actually be in the fall, in November. So there's a recommendation on the part of the legislators that we try to convene that meeting uh, and invite as many legislators who are available to attend this fall. And um, part of the reason for that is because there's an earlier start date now for, or I should say end date, for when new bills can be proposed and it's the 1st of December, I believe. So if we don't have uh, you know, some feedback or information to share, suggestions, uh, until February, we won't, we'll just be in a reactive mode that, rather than a proactive mode. Uh, so if there's no objection, that'll be the meeting preceding our budget discussion, so we will still have a little time on our agenda. And I'd be happy to go out and make that uh, invitation if you would be agreeable to that. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So I would suggest that we may have a discussion item on our next agenda, just preparing for the legislators, whether there's anything specifically as a board we want to have for them. Um, so um, anything else for Deborah? Uh, yes. Last meeting I asked you about uh, emotional wellness support stuff. I forget the exact <laughs> term. <laughs> Committee. Um, I was wondering if there's been any uh, change on that front. Um, you mean the teacher yes. committee? Yes. Maybe? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, we have a few things going. I can, I'll can. i just check my calendar. But as um, I mentioned in my last report, we have um, our leadership team has expanded this year. And once a month, we are including an afternoon with the curriculum uh, council, which is uh, comprised of teachers from across all the schools. And another time of the month, we have a social emotional learning committee, also yes. aligned with the leadership team. And they are meeting, I believe it's, um, I'll have to look at my calendar, but in a, in a few weeks coming up. And um, part of the work that is underway with that committee is continuing on some of our trauma informed practice work. Mm -hmm. um, our leadership team is also meeting with David Mel uh, Melnick, who is one of the people who has provided a quite a lot of professional development here in this district for our staff. And we're meeting with him four times this year. Uh, and we also have a small group of people who are doing a book study on one of the uh, recent authors who was very helpful. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that work is well underway. And uh, I don't know if we had as a team talked about whether there's a way to have student voice involved, perhaps, or in the past, if anyone helped me about whether we might have considered that or we hadn't specifically, but I would like to open an invitation to you town to yeah. have a conversation more in depth about it, maybe yeah. outside of a board meeting, yes. to talk about your interests and if they're, if, and about how we might include you. Yeah. Kelly, are you offering to have that conversation with Towns? Can Absolutely. We All right, awesome. Can you reach out to Kelly yes. at the central office? Okay, yes. perfect. I, I do hope that believe helps. that our um, health teacher, Megan Fowley, is working on building a school health advisory committee as well. Perfect. So I'm not sure if that's what you might be interested mm -hmm. in. And she's looking for parents and community members to join into that. So I'll make sure I share that email with you, Towns. Thanks. Question. There are the um, <coughs> pages four through seven, uh -huh. uh, where it seems like a, a school by school, somewhat of an assessment. Uh -huh. Is that a self assessment by the individual schools? Yes, so I'll speak about. Yes, you're moving on to the next. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. That's the part of the report. Uh, well, part Maybe of it we'll is the up to up to the end of page four. Right. Then the leadership team's report oh. follows, but they are directly connected because we were the first portion, which is the chart, mm -hmm. uh, was actually the result of the consensogram that we spoke of a few meetings ago. Our staff gave us feedback about how well we're implementing our implementation plan, and um, 
Alicia and Stephen uh, took the raw data that each principal collected and they developed this information, which I'm sharing with you in our report, so that you can see that we are still in the process of working toward implementing several of the objectives uh, on this plan. But the following page, beginning on page uh, five, we'll be turning over to our principals because they'll speak to uh, some of the more details about implementation, in particular of MTSS. Okay, okay. sure. So, Chris, did, did you have anything particular that you wanted to sort of um, probe? Yeah, no? um, the, it seems that there's some expression of need uh, for resources in some of the reports. I'm wondering if they're uh, more sufficiently comprehensive to um, talk about what I brought up last time about allocating some money from the fund balance to address those needs for this year. Yeah. So that's, that's, so some of, some of them address questions like that. So that's what I'm Very about. true. And, um, and I noticed, Deborah, in your, um, in your report, uh, there is an October 8th? 16. Uh, an October 8th meeting of, of administrators to discuss the budget? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then we're, uh, the Finance Committee is getting together at the ten, on the 10th. So um, perhaps there's an opportunity to kind of work this through that. Mm -hmm. Sequence? Absolutely. Um, yes. We had just had an opportunity to review this data for the first time with our leadership team in the last meeting. We're meeting again, well, we meet up twice a month, um, so we'll continue to probe that. And as you know, uh, this is the point in time when we are examining budget to make recommendations to the board for next year. But I think you're speaking about an immediate right. response, yeah. which is something slightly different. Yeah. But, but which will connect. Mm -hmm. Of course. Mm -hmm. Sorry for No, I, I was just going to say that you know we uh, we want to get a, a better understanding of what the students' needs are, mm -hmm. and it, so it's not like a one-time money move to one place, but make you know we we would be planning for all student needs, so the money would be used effectively. So just by transferring the money doesn't mean that we would understand, you know, like, so if we just made that statement right now and transferred that amount of money, it doesn't, it's not comprehensive. So that's um, the only reason to wait. Yeah, but but, that's why we would staff it out yeah. um, through um, administration and then finance committee. And then, so when, when we come back with something, we have something that you can actually sort of look at and sink your teeth into. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, that's great. Um, so shall we, uh, shall we go then to the leadership team report? Once again, um, if I may just say, I really like this thematic approach, which being able to look at, um, at the different schools through uh, the same or at least similar lenses, um, it, I find it very helpful. Um, uh, again, if, Perhaps if there's something to highlight or um, uh, just to, to raise questions about, maybe do that because I think the report itself is quite, okay. is quite understandable. Sure. I guess we didn't actually look for a spokesperson, but if someone from the team would be willing to make a few highlights or, uh, or we can simply respond to questions. Um. <laughs> I, I guess I wanted to know, so what we, in the MTSS, we have a 44% level two score and a 52 uh, level three score. How, how does that uh, correlate with uh, what we're seeing in each individual, like if we are using that data to provide us some, uh, uh, some information, uh, do we need a, do we want to get to a 70%? What is, what is this telling us as a board? You know, how do we, how do we best interpret that from the descriptions here? So descriptions are really good. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just trying to figure out how to, the percentage. Well, just to, I, I can explain it a little bit deeper. I mean, the foundation of the page three, so yep. what that 46% means is that 46% of our staff believe we're just at the beginning stages of implementation. So there's 
a lot more than we do. Um, and about 40% feel like we're doing it. We just need more time to do it. What that wrench, that little wrench represents is that we should be at a level four okay. according to the implementation plan. So we're not quite yet where we should be. Nobody believes that we're where we should be quite yet. And in this level, so level four means seventy percent or greater. Is that what it was? No. So there's no under data analysis. Mm -hmm. There's no no teacher or there's no scores of a level four here. Oh no, I know, but so but are in the key there's what a seventy percent or greater. So so I, when I was looking yeah. at this, that's I was actually, like, are we trying to get that goes to the for the that last uh, section? Okay, yeah. I was just because you said like, are we trying to get okay? Yeah. So no. when you look at when you look at that <laughs> next section, you know where uh, we have eighty percent level three, seventy six percent level two. The one that really jumps out is the ninety seven percent of level yeah. three and four. Um, that's where we feel like our, our our teachers feel like our mentoring and new teacher training programs are implemented and just need a little bit of maintenance or, or need some maintenance to them to, to make them a little better. Um, and so that is, um, that's probably our strongest single spot in, yeah. in our data is that our, we, we do, and, and let's just say the commitment is high, we do three days of training for all new teachers um, in our district to bring them into um, the work that we do as a, as a district around our uh, student learning outcomes, our evaluation process, and just the nuts and bolts of how to be in our district. And so that shows that, you know, our work there, we are in a good spot. And so that, that's why that's okay. in the 70% category. I think your other question was around the variations, like what, why, why is there a difference? And some of our differences can be looked by building. So we looked at like, okay, was, was that the difference in U32 and all the elementary schools? And, and actually we did have a couple of those where U32 was at a, le a level two and elementary schools were at a level three. And that tells us just that, okay, that's something that the elementary schools have gotten further along in the process. And you know, if, you know it, why, right? You know, the first question we just asked is why? Is, is it something that we didn't focus on here at U32 uh, as much, or is it something that needs to grow from the elementary schools to U32 itself? And so okay. that's kind of things that it shows. But, but these are also rather subjective measures, yes? It's how, we, how they feel it, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. It's where yeah. the teachers feel like we are as a school. How do you feel in our school that we're doing on this particular, in this particular area? Yeah. Which is a good barometer for, you know, hey, this, are we communicating well enough? Mm -hmm. You know, what we're supposed to, what we're doing. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? In, in terms of the... Um, Deadline uh, on page eight of the word special education. Have to submit the budget for this coming year by um, October 15th to the, to the agency of education. Correct. And what is that? Why, why is the agency of education involved in that? And do they end up like what do they do with the budget then? Do they have, do they approve it and and does it become a binding budget on the district or no? So it's the service plan is our overall best guess yeah. of what we think we <coughs> anticipate the needs will be for the following school year. So right now that budget that I'm working on is for FY21, and that's used within the legislation mm -hmm. to determine uh, revenue for us okay. across the state. They take a look at the overall costs and the spending across all of the state and determine the percentage of reimbursement. So it's information for the, the agency of education. Correct, and it will inform our budget. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Good question. Um, anyone else? No, I think this was really well done. So thanks very much. Uh, now, spotlight on towns. Yeah, my student report. Yes, we're ready. Okay. Um, so, uh, going back a bit in time, about a week and a half ago was the climate strike. I sadly didn't get arrested. Um, we're all sad about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was uh, uh, help, uh, many students at U32 helped with planning. Um, uh, a lot of people showed up. Uh, can't say exactly how many. It was a lot of people, though. And they marched from uh, the Montpelier High School to the City Hall and uh, rallied there for a while. And uh, everyone was very excited about that. Um, then uh, there was a, a YATS meeting. I'm not entirely sure what YATS is. 
Yeah. And adults <laughs> transforming schools together. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. You were. Uh, you went on, some people went on a field trip to go yaks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, then uh, there were auditions for the middle school play, the middle school people. <coughs> And uh, the theater programs are both uh, fully implemented now. I checked in on uh, the tech program, and they were sorting screws and making sets. And it looked very interesting. Um, uh, our, uh, our Seeking Social Justice program held a community dialogue night yeah. to talk about uh, hate symbols and uh, hate speech and uh, changes that they've made to the handbook. Uh, and I hear that went very well, and that there was lots of great um, dialogue among community members. Um, so, uh, I don't know how many board members here are, are, in, are in the policy committee? Three. Okay. Um, so, uh, another student group that focuses on uh, consent and uh, sexual health among uh, students is planning to present uh, a policy to the policy committee on the next meeting that, uh, to allow teachers to provide condoms, uh, dental dams, and lubricant to students if they ask for it. Um, this might be uh, betraying my own personal bias, but this is a very important issue that I know lots of students care about, and uh, I know people are really looking forward to uh, talking to the policy committee about this. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Yes, the SATs are October 12th, uh, so get ready for that. All, all, yeah. Everyone's really excited. <laughs> and um, the PSATs, I believe, will be held uh, the next Wednesday at the, at the school, and the day's going to be all weird. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty exciting. Um, another student group uh, that focuses on uh, helping middle schoolers, met with middle schoolers, uh, they uh, discuss their issues and uh, how to help them. Um, and yeah, that's what, <laughs> I'm very specific, and that's, uh, that, that's my student report. It's peer mentoring. Peer mentoring, yeah, that's the, that's the, you know, official name for it. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Towns. No and problem. it's my understanding that you and me, uh, me are going to alternate attendance. Is that what uh, in Is the future? Correct? Well, I don't know. That's what's what Floor had said. They, they've asked for that. Oh, simply okay. Because of their. Time so that's why we have not here today. Yes. 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 <laughs> so, so we'll see you met. in the next not next meeting, but the following. Yes. Right. You're always welcome. But yeah, you're always welcome, <laughs> and we'll keep you posted <laughs> as well on. Um, are, are Mia and Towns on the WCUUSDSB at <laughs> U32.org? <laughs> 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 I didn't receive this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll make sure. Part two. Okay. We will. We'll okay. get your exact email. <laughs> okay. Stay all right. <laughs> you can't imagine how long I had to practice that. It rolled right <laughs> off the tongue. Uh, yes, yes. Um, thank you, Towns, very much. Any questions for Towns? Actually, yeah. Okay. Um, at the last meeting, you asked a question of, of your principal, right, of what would happen if you got arrested during yes. the protest, and that sort of led to this discussion of what the policy is, that it's an, un you know, it's an unexcused absence, right, just like you were sick and couldn't play sports on yeah. Friday, could do it on Saturday. Um, there was a post, I think, on the Middlesex mm -hmm. Front Porch Forum about that policy, and I spoke to uh, a teacher at Pillar High School who said, you know, U32 really should look at this and, you know, and, and talk about the, you know, changing that policy. I think they looked and found some way to give students who participated credit for community activity or yes. community engagement or something. So my question in here is, um, you know, really honestly, how many of the kids who missed school that Friday were doing it to engage in the issues and engage in the protest and not as sort of, you know, not that I would accuse anyone of doing this, but I think you know what I mean, right? You know, how many kids are doing this <laughs> as, 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 as an excuse to you know, miss classes for a day? And the second part of that is, is there a sentiment among the students who did sincerely participate that that policy at U32 should be looked at and changed? Um, so to answer your first question, uh, the majority of students from U32 I talked to didn't miss the whole day. Uh, they went and then they, uh, event they returned to the school and they participated in the rest of their classes. Um, I missed the whole day, uh, and I know some other people who did, but uh, the majority of students I talked to went back to school. Um, so maybe they were using it to skip some out of school, but they did return, so I, I, I don't know. 
It's the second part, um, I think that there was a, um, a lot of conflict between people specifically in um, uh, sports teams who wanted to be able to pursue uh, that extracurricular activity. I know I understand um, a lot of people didn't attend the strike because they wanted to be able to uh, participate in uh, sports that day. And I think that the overall consensus we got from them though was that they found it irritating, um, but they weren't uh, they weren't going to pursue anything to change it, and they didn't think it uh, was necessary to really change it that much. Hmm. Thank you, I appreciate that. Interesting. Yeah. Can Another I can, can I expand yeah. a little bit on that? I I got several emails from <coughs> several parents about the the policy, and I directed them all to speak to 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 Stephen. But while we were in the protest, I was going to say that I, I was there, and most of the students that went totally wanted to be mm -hmm. there, and some didn't participate in the. Manchester meet and stuff like that. Like they really wanted to, mm -hmm. to, to be there. And uh, there were a few members of the community, especially Terry Allen, who's a reporter for the New York Times, and she was, she was very strong on me. And I said to send you an email too. And I said, I hope you guys didn't give permission to the kids. I hope that they understand that you know co what consequences are and that they're willing to break the law for their beliefs. So I just wanted to share that because she was the and, and it was really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> To hear from 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 her, and it changed the mind of a bunch of students as she was speaking. They were like, "Okay, yeah, we'll accept the consequence." So it was an interesting point, of, at least for me, because I received a lot of meat parent, you know, like yeah. <laughs> that were very upset <laughs> about not giving them permission. So it was. I, I feel comfortable that whatever you know, we just need to be clear so that Stephen can follow the policy. Yep, I, I had a conversation with a community member along those same lines, right? This is civil disobedience, yeah. right? Civil, you know, engagement. There are consequences in the yeah. real life. This is not a safe space, right? You're talking about going out in public and protesting. You know, there are fair conduct. Yeah, that's for the policy community to decide. I think it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. without a doubt. I did hear that there were some students preparing some sort of statement to present to the policy committee, but um, they haven't come forward yet. So, mm. and they have a full address it then. I'm curious if other board members had any communications sent their way. I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, um, I was CC'd on on one, mm -hmm. but um, but I, I think uh, I think it was handled, you know, very well. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, by the students too. No, I, yeah, so yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that needs to be yeah. said as well. <laughs> yes. I, I would just offer I mean, one of the ways that I thought about this because. These decisions are never easy. Uh, um, but one of the ways that I thought about it is that one of the things we want students to do is learn how to make tough decisions. Mm -hmm. And if we don't give them opportunities to make decisions, then we don't prepare them for life in which they have to. And so um, so I know that it was difficult. It was, you know, the, the kids see it as that one event, too. And we really have this as a policy across the entire year for a variety of events and a variety of students. And, um, and so I think that us holding true to the one standard that we have for participating in co-curriculars, which is you attend school. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a great rec requirement or anything like that. Um, and so, you know, the kids were thoughtful about it, and there were some that chose not to be in school so that they could be at the climate rally. And, um, and they, in making that decision, they also knew that they couldn't participate in co-curriculars. And it wasn't just uh, kids who were in, um, Sports, and we had a robotic team, and we had some other events that were going on as well. And so, yeah. So, I think all in all, the the, the, the kids do well in this; they respond yeah. well. Yeah. Good. Very interesting. Very good. It, um, is it? Sorry, Deborah. As I may um, mention, mentioned to you before, some of our administrators, uh, well, all of our administrators have early days in the morning. So uh, if, if this is an appropriate time, I just wanted to know if the board wouldn't mind excusing any of them who wish to take their leave and uh, journey home, if that's all right, unless there's more questions for them. I know when we have our budget season, they will be here for the duration. We can count on that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Anybody, is anybody object to that? I, or? I certainly don't object. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or also you, Taz, if that's something that you would like to I'm going to have to take you up on that offer. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So, so we're very I'm going to move to officially say if any administrators want to leave, um, <laughs> they'll end now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are free to do so. Okay. Just so it's not a 
question. Thank you. If they're in this, uh, yeah. Um, so you want to move it and, and do it as a formal action? Yeah, just, just so folks. Okay. So Chris has moved to release. Um, our captive audience. <laughs> Wait, that's too broad. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, release administrators, captive administrators and students, um, if they wish to be released. Um, do we have a second? Absolutely. Dorothy seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Okay. Go in peace. <laughs> Um, so now, 5.0, <coughs> consent agenda. We have the minutes of September 18 on page 12. Are there any changes to those minutes? Do you want a motion? To approve oh, yep. please, yeah, thank I'll you. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of 918. Floor moves. We need a second? Second. Chris seconds. Great. Now, any changes to the minutes? Um, uh, just one small typo. Um, at 4.1, um, Floor is um, listed as Daz Smith. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, maybe that was your hip hop name. <laughs> um, so that should be Diaz Smith. And then on 4.2, on the last paragraph for um, Yatst. Um, it talks about the gap between students and teachers. Is that what Yatst is about? Bridging the gap? Bridging. It's, not, it's not the gap between students. So, so actually, the, there is part of their mission is to, to bring students and teachers together to work on issues. And so mm -hmm. bridging the, there is a term that was used called bridging the gap for mm -hmm. a group of students who did this work in the past. And so uh -huh. that may be where that comes from. OK, OK, good. But that's, that's yes. correct characterization. OK, great. Good. That's all I've got. Scott, my name is Mr. Like what? Name. Where is that? K-A-I-E-L. Um, throughout or just not? No, just, well, I just caught it. Oh, oh, I see. No, um, in right, you're right. Um, J if, if you can do a global replace, Lisa, yeah. wherever there's J-A-E-I-L, if you can replace it with J-A-I-E-L. All right. Oh, yeah, it's a couple of places. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, thanks, Jaya. Anybody else? <clears throat> okay. Um, if you're ready, we'll all in favor of approving the minutes of September 18. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Okay. So we have now the board orders. The board, oh, yeah, thank you. Um, we would need a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the board orders. One for 188,550 with 90 cents. Sorry, can you say the number? 188,550. 158, 550 with 99 cents. Okay, thanks. And one for 129, 650 with 54 cents. Okay, thank you. Second. I'll second it. Lindy seconds. Okay, any questions about the board orders? I do have a question, Scott, but I'm assuming it will have to be something I asked for. Um, in the beginning of the board orders, there's several green mountain power. And there's one in there for 441 and it's not legal for where. So my, my question is, is that one month to be in the central office? It's just for the CDUSA. Whereas the rest are actually broken down by building. Hmm. Probably. I imagine we have our own meter. But yeah. um, we can certainly find that out and we email you back. Okay. Sure. It, it, it stood out to me, too, as a really high yeah. number. Four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, for Not for sure. that building over there for one mm -hmm. month, I mean, it's almost as much as. Yeah. I don't know if it's one month or, but I, I'll sure. definitely look. And we'll, we'll look into it and get back to you. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Maybe we're mining Bitcoin on the side. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have one 
I have one question. So hipster. <laughs> oh, <listen. laughs> <laughs> Full of surprises. <laughs> um, okay. Um, actually, I, I noticed also that there's a, there are a lot of orders for Amazon. Um, and I'm wondering, are these, are these purchases necessary to go through Amazon, or could they be procured locally? Well, I have to look at them individually, but generally we use Amazon because of the speed, and they're usually the least costly of all available vendors. Um, mm -hmm. We use them often for uh, supplies and for technology, uh, but if you wanted a fuller accounting, I'd have to bring those okay. at a future. Uh, I was assuming it looked more like excessive this month, just because it was a lot of the beginning of school year stuff that mm -hmm. teachers and staff right. report was my right. assumption on that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's if there's sort of a, a procurement. I wouldn't go so far as to call it a policy, but but you know, uh, a tendency maybe um, just to procure locally wherever possible. Um, if it's if it's way out of line, then of course it has to be reasonable. Well, part of it is the convenience of online versus traveling. Um, we don't have a very large selection of instructional materials here in the Montpelier area. Some would probably have to travel to Burlington, and you know, we just some have, sometimes have some highly specialized needs. But um, but I could certainly understand the desire to. Yeah, I, I'm just sort of raising it to yeah. the level of awareness. Of course, but right. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to just say as a board that we'd be careful of mm -hmm. questioning too much of that. Sure, because yeah. Because I think quite often the convenience, the speed, the no shipping cost, if you order through some of the, I mean, educational materials you're going to order anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and, from a catalog of some yeah, kind. Yeah, and there's going to be shipping at 10% or whatever. So um, I just think Yes, you can bring it to awareness, but as a board, I don't want to question too much of that. No, I think point well taken. I guess I was thinking along the lines of in the summer, the summer school project, where it was mm -hmm. learned that the herbs that we ship in from California could be grown in our own greenhouse. Um, but the pencils and books can't. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> goes without saying. Well, I mean, that's kind of the, if the you just have Amazon, you don't know what it no, is. No, you don't. Yeah. And, and also, you know, so um, you know, if we have an environmental policy that we, um, I don't know, with, with all the glue with Amazon, whether it's increased environmental hazard or not, um, but if we were going to have an environmental policy of trying to be least intrusive, then we would counter kind of these things. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm aware mm -hmm. of. Well, there's contract prices <laughs> with places that schools get to. The contract prices through either W.B. Mason or Staples or any of those. Mm -hmm. um, but they're being shipped from wherever. So yes, I think we have an expert opinion over here. Uh, so just so you all have some context as well, whenever we use federal funds to make purchases, we are required to go through a procurement process. So we have to look at at least three vendors and do some price comparison and then provide the rationale for why we're going with the vendor that we're going with. So um, there's a lot of scrutiny and due diligence. It's a requirement of being a steward of federal funds. Good. Thank you. No. No, we have to do it every single time we use federal funds to procure these materials. We did it today. Wow. And you did a uh, search on SAM.gov to make sure that whoever you chose is allowed to be paid. If there's no, you know, nothing outstanding that would um, not allow them to, to be paid in any way. So it's it's really thorough, and we're monitored on a regular basis for that. Great. Wonderful. Um, I think this is the most, sort of, the best back and forth over board orders that we've had in a long time. <laughs> um, so, we're ready for a vote? Yes. All in favor of the motion that Floor made and Lindy seconded? Um, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Good. All right. Committee reports. Negotiations. So we had a meeting um, with uh, Suzanne Culver, uh, George and Lindy, uh, myself and Deborah in the room over at the central office and Chani on the video conference. 
um, which I think works quite well. Um, I would recommend that the camera be moved to the bottom of the TV so that the person watching isn't sort of watching from above. <laughs> <laughs> um, we didn't really, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of uh, familiarization. I hadn't met Susanna before. For some reason, they elected me chair. They promised it was pro forma. <laughs> we'll hold you to that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, get together on October 29th uh, to talk about the interest based bargaining process, which I'm looking forward to learning about. Um, we spent some time in the executive uh, session talking about uh, previous negotiations and um, you know, things that should stay in executive session. Um, um, and that was all the action we took. Um, I look forward to, uh, to working with Susanna and, Col uh, Susanna and Chai, um, with George and Lindy on this, um, as this is along with everything else that I made in Bush. Um, Great. That's all I have to say. Fantastic. Do you have a scheduling time and date for your meetings, or just the next? We don't, just the next one. Okay. Uh, but we did receive the letter uh, that, I, that I've signed uh, from the union, uh, uh, their intent to negotiate a successor agreement. And we are responding, saying that we look forward to joining you for the IPB training on October 29th. Mm -hmm. And just one addition, um, the uh, regional, excuse me, the association has formed and they've changed their name to the Washington Central Educators Union, including teachers and support staff from all the member bargaining groups. They've elected uh, co-chairs for both teachers and support staff and they will have eight uh, representatives on the uh, teachers and support staff side for negotiations. Uh, so we will, they'll be prepared to join us and we'll be looking at setting dates within the next few weeks to get going. Great, do we know who the co-chairs are? For negotiations, mm -hmm. um, John, on that letter that you have is the chair. Um, <coughs> there are co-chairs of the leadership team as a whole, but they didn't have available all of the negotiating team members. That's okay. I last need met. to know. I'm just Sorry. Thank you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, anything more for poly uh, for negotiations, rather? Well, in answer to Vera's, we couldn't set dates until they sent us the email saying they were ready. And then once we're all together, the dates would be set. So they will be public dates, but or, I mean, And they'll be there they'll too be for public. that for that October 29th? Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. great. Yes, they will. Excellent. Mm -hmm. My question, the October 29th, the IBB, is that is that the one that you were saying yes. that was open as that's a reminder for it is. other it's people? Open. I've done it before, and it's really helpful. It's, but. Yes, thank you. So uh, that training is three to four hours in length. It starts at 5 p.m. and it's going to be here at U32. It'll include the members of our team, but we had said earlier if there are any board members who wish to join out of interest, you're welcome to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I've said before, I think this is one of the best things we do. Um, it's really very, very good. That's so. 29th, you said at 5? October, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Are we ready to move on to policy? Sure. So we had a meeting on the 23rd of uh, September. Uh, it was well attended with um, actually enthusiastic participants, I thought. Wow. Um, and we, um, and we didn't do any policy making or proposing at that point. Uh, but I think during our next go around, we're going to be uh, talking about the um, election spending policy, uh, the, the library policy, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and Section A of the booklet as well. And we get right, Section mm -hmm. A of the booklet, so we're going to work our way through uh, the various policies. And what I would propose that we do mm -hmm. is as we get through them, present them to this board so that you're not, you're not inundated all at the end. Great. And we go through them in a systematic way and either adopt them or not adopt them or propose changes to them. But as we move along, rather than waiting until. <coughs> Two meetings in June when we have that and all that. So as we get them done, we'll, we'll be presenting that mm -hmm. to you folks. And our next meeting is um, October 22. 
And it's my town said, this town said, we'll have some interesting policies to grapple with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 At what time? Um, uh, that's at 4.30. That one is earlier at 4.30, yeah. and uh, we will meet at the central office right. for that one. 4.30 to 6.30. Mm -hmm. Great. <clears throat> Those are all open meetings. Yep. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah, thank, um, you. thank you very much. Anything else for the policy committee? Good. Then let's move on. We have uh, board organization and planning number one. Superintendent Search Consultant. Okay, um, we have, uh, <laughs> you've seen these documents before. We have them in hard copy. Uh, here's the situation. Um, I will ask Flora to back me up mm -hmm. on this, if you would please. Um, what we had initially wanted to do was in addition to Mark Anders, whom you remember, briefed us. We're not going into executive session, by the way. Oh, all right. Did you want? No, we don't want. Okay. Everybody, this is fine. Well, we have the camera, on, so it's public yeah. anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it is. That's right. Yeah. So um, we want it to be public. We want it to be public. <laughs> uh, Mark Andrews briefed us in executive session, um, and you saw documents that he uh, sent around electronically. Documents related to his proposal to us to uh, help as our consultant in the superintendent search, as I try to open an envelope and talk at the same time. Um, so, uh, Stephen, I think he needs a marching band. <laughs> yeah, really. So what, um, what we wanted to do is not just go necessarily with Mark just because he did the last one and it worked out you know, well. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> um, we wanted at least to investigate the possibility of another. And this is what Fleur undertook. Yeah, so we reached out to try to get a different proposals, but the, it, they were unable to commit and send another proposal. And because of the timing, so it's up to the board, you know, our recommendation would be to, you know, start sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. But we were unable, we were trying to get a, a Brian Oregon to help us, and he was unable to commit the time right now at this, at this particular time. And so we, at the moment, have just one proposal for, for Mark Andrews, so we, you know, I, yeah, rather than mess around and, and for, for what seems like um, not much potential gain, we figured we would just propose sure. to engage Mark for this one as well. Um, known quantity, um, I think he developed, as I understand it, a good relationship with those who worked with him last time. Um, um, and we can get up and running with this pretty quickly. So what I would entertain is a motion to um, empower me to um, inform Mark that he is. Do you need another, sir? I was just going to get into the table. Bless you. There's some more. There's more. More different documents. Yes. Thank you. more? Anyway, getting back to the motion, the motion would be to approve uh, engaging Mark Andrews as our consultant for the superintendent search for, for a non-interim superintendent, permanent superintendent beginning in the 2020-2021 school year. If someone would be willing to make such a motion. Thank to you, sign Chris. a contract with. To sign a contract with, yeah, to engage him formally as our consultant. I'll second it. Thank you, Dorothy. Uh, 
he has proposed uh, $5,500 as his fee. Um, and he has a, uh, basically a description of, what, of the services that he is going to be providing us that you have um, before you. So the question is, well, the question is whatever questions you ask. Seems perfectly reasonable to me. He helped us before. He's in Oakland. He spent the vast majority of his career in Vermont. <coughs> expect a consultant with this CV is going to ask at least $100 an hour, 55 hours. I think that that's not an unreasonable amount of time or an unreasonable cost. Okay, one of the things that he said um, was at meetings, he likes things to happen. He yes. likes to do things, not just meet. He wants to have a result at the meeting, which I think mm -hmm. he, he actually proved that, I think, last time. Mm -hmm. And so we'll move, move the process along pretty well. Mm -hmm. And just a question. Nice, nice mm -hmm. to work with. So, a cookie thing. Yeah. <laughs> you don't forget anything, do you, Janice? <laughs> yeah. Not when it's cookies. <laughs> okay, what I want to know though, does anybody, is there any uneasiness about this? Anybody, no? Okay. I, I think the clarification that we should make is that this is just for hiring a consultant. It doesn't mean that the process is set. This is just a proposal. The hiring committee has yeah. been met. So, we're we're people people to people. Then so we, we haven't decided. So it doesn't mean that you're signing on to just, you know, exactly what yeah. he, this is what he plans to do. But it doesn't mean that there's not going to be more participation. It doesn't mean that we're, you know, you're, that you're yeah. out of. Yeah. It says to complete other tasks necessary that result in selection and employment mm -hmm. of a new superintendent. Yeah. Good. All right. Um, in that case, are we prepared to vote? Great. All in favor of approving uh, the contract, or signing a contract with Mark Andrews to, uh, as our consultant in the superintendent search, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Great. Uh, can, sorry. Can you tell me who made that motion? Yes. Chris and Dorothy. Okay. Yes. Um, there, there's another. Uh, there's sort of a subheading to the same. Um, to the same item, okay. we need to inform, or I, as chair, need to inform the secretary of education mm -hmm. of uh, our action. Um, this is part of the Rule Three Thousand series so that the Secretary of Education can consult with the State Board and see if they want to redraw the lines of the supervisory <coughs> union, um, or the, the superintendency, I guess, before we hire one. So that is, that's the purpose of informing the Secretary of Education. Um, I don't expect it will be much more than a formality, <coughs> but just so that you understand. Would you, um, can we just have consensus in my sending such a, such a pro forma letter to the Secretary of Education? Sure. Yeah. Yes. It's Great. Required. It's required. Okay. It's required. That's right. Thank you very much. Good. So, um, 8.2, schedule for board goal monitoring, page 22. So in our board work plan, there had been um, uh, different touch points where, in which we were, the board was looking for information. And in October, uh, there was a request to have an update on the um, math in particular because mm -hmm. there had been concerns about that. It's also the time that we typically reviewed the uh, overall performance for the district by looking at a triangulation of the data, including our local assessments, which are uh, primarily the um, Star 360, I think you've heard us talk about that. And then, of course, our progress report outcomes and our SBAC, which is the state assessment result. So um, the, myself the and the leadership team are pulling that report together. We're going to be reviewing the first draft of it, which we've, I've just finished a few days ago, next week when we meet. And then we'll present that information to you, which we hope will also inform discussions about budget. 
Mm -hmm. So that will help, I believe. So um, I also wanted to point out that just to help us, the board keep focused on our goals that I thought I would start to structure my report around the three goal areas. Oh, that's great. And, that's uh, great. and if there's anything in particular that anyone would like us to focus on or have me to report out or our administrative team to report out, please let me know and I will do that. Anybody want to take up Deborah on her offer? I do. Um, so the questions um, that would be addressed is what is the data telling us? How do we feel about that? Is our current performance acceptable? If not, what would be? Um, I'd like to know what would be the proposed plan to improve performance and why, and how that proposal is effective um, or is anticipated to be effective because you never know until the end whether it is. Mm -hmm. But just the how to achieve a different result. Sure, I'll have that. Just the options I've like had. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. And I, I believe we went to a new math program. Yes. In the elementary just this math. year. Yes. So I'm not sure the data would be effective in showing any outcomes of that of that change yet. No, but as I look back at the last monitoring report the board received in October of 2018. Uh, it was recognized that math was an area of focus mm -hmm. and there was a goal set right. to try to achieve a year's progress in a year. And while we didn't have the new program, we had updated the curriculum, which as you know is the content information mm -hmm. that drives the uh, how we move forward with our day-to-day -day practices. And the Ready Math program is really a set of materials which provides further guidance. But So there were some adjustments made last year. There were. At least one school had some additional math intervention support. Uh, and as you saw from the report that was reviewed earlier, more uh, schools are seeking additional math mm -hmm. intervention support in this next round of budgeting. Uh, so, But in addition to that, we have been working on practices. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping to see improvement. And so when you report this out, will you also report out on what professional development is taking place yes. in mathematics? Absolutely. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. And just to reflect on this too, this is not completely new. So Deborah has tried to help us keep up to date with what we did in October. So the questions came from the quality committee that is not existing right now, but we spent a lot of time between all the schools thinking about what we wanted the data to say. You know, and then we narrowed it down to these four questions because we wanted to have enough information to be able to yeah, you know, do what you're saying. What would we need to make it to, to make it to make it better? And then the last thing would be that we can't. Um, we didn't want to wait. So I, I was pretty pushy about about this because we said we wanted to know because every school set up different goals mm -hmm. last last year, and we said we would report back in in October. So like to hold ourselves accountable and not lose track because we have had so many other things. So we keep track of the kids, which is what what we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks. And it'll, it'll just be helpful understanding equity too. And, then, yes. and, and that's the most important part of yeah. it. It would really help us understand where, where each we're school, we're, yeah, where, where we are all together academically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Vera. Um, one thing that our group when we were discussing the book had said is um, when we look at data, we want the good, the bad, the ugly. So, yes. Um, I just want to reiterate that when that comes to us. Good news and bad news, you'll get yeah. it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Good. It's highly confidence building, actually. Right. Yeah. Well, I, think, I don't think we can improve unless we recognize where our challenges are. Agreed. Mm -hmm. um, other, uh, other points that you'd like to see highlighted at this point? OK. So just, sorry. The, the focus on math is because that was identified as a, area a specific of, area of need. Correct. Yeah. In prior years. Uh, yeah. Is there data on other subjects? Mm -hmm. Yes. We will focus on uh, literacy and mathematics uh, in particular this time. Mm -hmm. Can you, um, is there somewhere on our website that we can read about the new math program that we just implemented just to have an overview of it? Uh, I don't think it is, but we can definitely post some information about it. Uh, I think that absolutely. Would be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah. yeah. So, could anyone point us, point me to where those goals are? Yeah, that was. 
Yeah, we can send to that. I, I can I can send that pass. Can you send it to the three of us? Yeah, right. Yeah, we we have it. Was that in that email that I sent? No, it? no it wasn't. I'll, I'll, I'll find it. But if you want to send it to me, I'll send it out. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll do that. Yeah. yeah. But we looked at it last October 18th last year. We were all like looking at that. And it, yeah, everybody should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It goes out to everybody. That's great. Yeah. So it all, we also, um, I think the general goal from our implementation plan is one year's growth in a year for every student. That was another one of, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that was one of the goals that you set last year, but it, it was set back in 2016. Is that an alarm? Yeah, and I think Jen probably has that because each school, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I did ask, but she returned me back to the documents I had already seen. From so, me? Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll track it, it down. It. Don't yep. worry. I'm good at ferreting out. I'm a great faith. historian. Yes, yeah. <laughs> excellent. Um, so this is listed as, a, as an action item, but uh, I think if we're, if we're in agreement about doing it this way, we don't have to necessarily vote on it, yeah? Mm -hmm. okay. So you're okay with me, I, I, just as we speak, changing it in our board goals? Yeah. <laughs> and then, so if, if the next time you get a printout of the board goals, it would be in there? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, dates for community budget forums, page 23. So these were some dates that uh, Scott and our board had, um, our board steering team had recommended for your consideration. So the idea would be to have early input while the budget's still in process. Um, at, by January 15th, we will likely have voted on the budget because of the timing required to warn and uh, publish the budget. Um, so the remaining meetings would be for information and then your final informational meeting would be the annual meeting and that's the night before town meeting. But open to suggestions. Yeah, how does it look to you? I think it looks reasonable. Um, my question is, how were the locations selected? It's based on where the board meets. Mm -hmm. Those are board meeting mm -hmm. dates. Okay. They would precede so the, the location, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Except the December 11th is a special meeting. It's a special yeah. meeting. Yeah. but So that could be yeah. at a different location yeah, if you wish. Sense, mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. we talked about U32 being a central place, but we could certainly go to any school. Yeah. No, I was fine with it. I was just <coughs> wondering how. How? Yeah. But if they're on the regular rotation or not, yeah. mm -hmm. that seems reasonable. And I have a question on this memo. It says that annual meeting Monday, March 9th. The town <coughs> meeting is the third. So isn't it Monday, March 2nd? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. That's a mistake. Good catch. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We don't want to be meeting the week after. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> that will not help us. Not at all. And that would also be the so it would be March second. We had, um, I believe so, unless the board wishes to choose another date. So that would be March second um, instead of March ninth, if you want to make a note of it. <clears throat> and the annual meetings are typically, I don't know about you, but I think in many schools they're closer to they're later in the evening to allow for more participation. But you can start it whenever you wish. If seven is too late, we can go earlier. Use your regular meeting time at 6.30. We just have to be sure we warn it that way when we get to the point of, of doing that. Mm -hmm. George, when U32 did it on the night before, was it at the normal board time, like 6.30? It's a regular meeting. Regular meeting. Yeah. yeah. But you guys started early your meetings, 5.30. Yeah. 5.30 or 6.00. Yeah, yeah. 5.30 yeah. So I think it's going to be like 5.30 <laughs> or 6.00 for the elderly people, too, that don't want to be out too late. Oh, sure. It's, no, no, yeah, it's, it's just that we, it was the uh, comment yeah. that, uh, yeah, that's why we moved hours to the morning. Yeah. And there may be snow that time of year. Yeah. yeah. We hope that. Yeah. <laughs> there will be snow. There will be snow, <laughs> yes, yes. Would you like to change it to 530? Well, this, this time <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. for the annual meeting. <laughs> yeah. It says at 7 p.m. Yeah. Oh, it's at 7, I see yeah. that now. Yeah. 530? Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather have it at 530. <laughs> But, or, or 6 p.m. because of your meetings, schedules. I think it closed for community members that are getting out of work at 5. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I see both sides of it, but I'm a little reluctant to change I, that I, annual meeting time. I think 6.30 or 7. 6.30 is our normal bond. Uh, yeah, 6.30. 6.30. 6.30 yeah. is. The yeah. annual meeting is 
Not, not a lot's going to happen. No. You're going to think about the budget <laughs> and any other reports about the school district you wish to right. make. Right. 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 a celebration of exactly. events, students, Correct. staff. I mean, there All. is a slideshow of pictures. And yes. Mm -hmm. stuff there. Um, it's so it's a very see. celebratory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I believe Stephen had shared that it, it's usually just a party of two. Yeah. who were when, here on the night before. And you 32, yeah, Berlin, yeah, the night before a town meeting. Before. But wasn't it at town meeting? No, we had a pre-town meeting at Berlin every Monday before. Yeah, we, oh, we had yeah, like Saturday, Saturday or something. I would have said it was a big we had, time. We had quite a few show up at pre-town meeting. We, we, can, we can talk about this at greater yeah, this, length yeah, um, later and, and maybe Should try to do it up in style. You should bring <laughs> For starters. I think it was in March. It should be sugar and snow, you know? Okay, so um, lots of optimism. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay. Do you want to take action? On this? Um, it's up to you. We'll, we'll just we'll just do it as an agenda. As, or to say um, as a consensus, whatever you want. Yeah. To um, do we have a consensus on this? Do we need to? Just just for clarity, um, when do we have to vote on the budget? As a board. Uh, January. January fifteen is probably the last okay. Okay. budget. Two informational meetings at which folks can have potential input mm -hmm. and then the and point change. Of yeah. And we're able to really change. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And then January 15, we, we really have to have it nailed down. Okay. Yeah. So um, consensus on the dates? Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody's okay with it? Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Thanks. Um, do we have hires to approve? Uh, not to approve, but I would like to just make an announcement and express appreciation. Uh, Alex Robb, who has been the director of the Community Connections Program for five years, is leaving in about a week to uh, take a position at uh, Community Financial. Part of his background was financial, so he's going to be going back to his roots. Uh, we have already located a person who can take over for him. It's one of our current site coordinators. Her name is Kim Bolduck. And, Bolduck. Bolduck. Yeah. and um, she has been with the program for 18 years since its inception. Mm -hmm. And we're very excited. She will have about a week of overlap with Alex before he leaves. So I just would like to publicly thank him for his devotion to the program. And uh, he's an, an excellent, been an excellent uh, leader in continuing that program over many years. So thanks to Alex for his hard work. I, I could have told you that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> you knew he was going to turn out well. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So anyway, just a welcome and a farewell. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Great. Um, anything else on this before we move on to uh, Public comments. <laughs> okay. I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. So, um, future agenda items. We still have CV fiber, which I, I think is, uh, we, that's just a, seems like a. Uh, <sighs> Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Instead of these just staying on, like, mm -hmm. let's. Take it off and. One is November, one is December, one, like, let's yeah. put them on the agenda. I, I don't want to tackle them all in one meeting. But right. Don't get them on the agenda. It's just going to keep getting We got the empty. Yeah. Um, I think we can. We empty this week covered today. Yeah. Today. Uh, but the others, um, I know that the board had talked about the renaming to yeah. be done over winter to try to get input and then maybe make a decision by the end of the school year if you yeah. wish to rename the yeah. district. Um, I think that would be a good combination one to put in some of the. Um, budget meetings where we're getting community input and student mm -hmm. input and right. I think getting the word out there that it's a consideration and having an opportunity to get feedback from the community would be a good time mm -hmm. to incorporate that during the budget meetings. Yes. And the policy committee had also spoken about um, possibly having a discussion about the elementary school choice option. Mm -hmm. During the budget meetings, we're part of a, as part of a community conversation about the future. Yeah. Uh, we don't. We looking at our back at our articles of agreement. That's not an action the board would take this year, but having some feedback from the community about how they feel about it would be helpful. Informed. Yeah. yeah. This is good. This is good. If there are other ideas in the same vein, mm -hmm. we should. I would love to have that conversation as a board first. 
just to kind of get a feel. Like, I don't even know yeah. how everybody here feels about right. the um, right. school choice. Mm -hmm. I'd love to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. We'll only put it on the next sure. time. Okay. Absolutely. The next agenda. Very good. Along with um, legislative, uh, that is, preparation for meeting with the legislators. Can I ask a question about that? Where would I find bills that might be coming up? Um, well, we're at, not in session right now. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, but for... In the future, it's, yeah. it would be on the website, the website for the legislators, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a section that talks about bills that are under consideration, that have been filed, bills that are in committee, you can, it's, it's well organized. And it it is. Yeah. 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 yeah, most of, most of them are, most but not all writers. writers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. House mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. For us, they're, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And Vera, um, CV Fiber, we're waiting for them to complete their survey. Oh. I guess their survey is underway. Um, and then that was what I was told okay. by their callous rep. And about solar power, solar power um, is there a is there a <laughs> another there winter a, issue? Uh, it was a topic that was brought up in the summer. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. what do you mean by that? Uh, well, Stephen, uh, there are a number of things that were kind of in the works. Mm -hmm. If we could. Um, and U thirty two. At U thirty two. Okay, I'll check with Stephen. Okay. I think that there, um, yeah. one thing is one thing that has held up a lot of schools from moving forward yeah. with solar panel is because there has been <coughs> some of the incentives have been reduced, mm -hmm. and um, when they were in place, it was uh, you know I think easy for, for example, Efficiency Vermont at one time was funding 50 percent of the district's investment if you were to move ahead with a solar installation. Um, now most people are looking at it as a lease arrangement. And in order to do that, you have to sign on to a very lengthy contract, which is something that you would need to discuss and, and think about. Uh, they're usually 20 years in length. And then at the end of that time, you would own the product. Uh, so that's a, a much different question than purchasing something, or financing it on your own. And it would be able to date. Right, and, and probably not really operating all that well yeah. by that time. Right. They say that they have a life of 20 years, so at that point you'd have to replace them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the issue right now is that there's not a great deal of incentive for solar. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, good. Well, just one more question. Did Please. you have a conversation with um, the fellow who was concerned about the snow types? Yes. Was he qualified? Um, we met with the, the, the bus company. We met with some folks from the school that, or the, the town that had concerns. And we've actually got a plan to move forward with um, some change in the, the way that the tires are, are being utilized right now, moving toward replacing the steerage tires with snows. Uh, and we had a lengthy conversation about the different options available given all the road conditions that we drive over. So uh, I think everyone left with a, there was, we had no guests tonight, so I think that means that we are, we're making progress. Mm -hmm. And when it's finalized, I'll write a report back to everyone. We're about two weeks away from getting it all finalized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sure. Deborah has cited the key indicator here. Yes. Um, <laughs> so um, anything more on future agenda items? Um, reflection and summary of meeting. Um, Marilyn did a great job oh, yes. on the last one, but well, <laughs> I, I was thinking. That, I, I, t I think the deal was that you wouldn't. Yeah, that it would be shared around, and I know. Um, I will do it, but I do have to wait till I see the rough drafts in minutes, so I don't forget something. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's so usually, we usually uh, not to. We have to have them ready out in five days, so yeah, you'll definitely that, get yeah. them by yeah. then. Yeah. Uh, so they actually, often they sooner than that. Yeah, yeah often. Yeah. Okay. Just so you know. Future agenda item. Um, I would like to have a report out on proficiencies, the grading, and where that leads for this graduating, graduating class of 2020. Because mm -hmm. I know there were some hiccups along the way, and I haven't really heard how they've been addressed or solve, or where does that mean? Good one, yeah. Is, it, is this the first year 
graduating. This is the first this is full the, year. This is the experiment class. Yeah, they're <laughs> ninth to. These are the guinea pigs. These are the guinea pigs. Did you want that next meeting or a Whenever future? Whenever it fits in. Okay. Whenever it fits in. Okay. okay. We'd be happy to. I think. Um, the proficiencies. Um, I, I'd like for it to be well prepared. Okay. If it's, um, <clears throat> I would defer to um, to you, Deborah. To well, we're, our plate is is very focused on budget at this time and providing the monitoring report, which will include some reference to proficiencies and grading, but um, I would prefer if we could wait another few weeks before okay. we had that in-depth discussion, mm -hmm. if that's okay. all right. Yeah, I don't okay. want to. Okay. Yeah. Joe? Is the notification going to be out, go out about the committee meetings, the dates? Uh, the We have not set regular dates for negotiations. The finance committee dates are already on the board calendar. Uh, and the policy committee has a, a meeting coming up, which I think. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. that one. We haven't set a, a, we haven't set meetings, regular meetings yet with that group, but. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we can do that. Yeah. I found the reorg of the website to be very helpful. Good. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Great. The, the, Thanks for the, the input. The meeting resources page is, yeah. it is terrific. The yeah. links to the work videos okay. come up. Great stuff. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we took your suggestion, and as you can tell, we have a very responsive team. Yeah. They had to go home, but they're very responsive. No, no, no. no. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. You're great. In terms of proficiencies, are there certain things that you want addressed? Um, because that might inform who comes to present or what's going to be presented. Um, same thing with Marilyn. You, same with you. Are there things you really want to So one of my about? specific questions is there was definitely a gap in meeting a proficiency that wasn't offered in a math class. So I would like an update. Like I know over the summer some of it was addressed, but I also want to know future-wise how is it being addressed? And there was a staffing issue, and I'm not sure that that staffing position got replaced, because I think this, it was a reduction in staff from last year's budget. So I just want to know that what we have spent for um, the standards for proficiencies for graduation have been addressed for the next class, and where we stand right now with our senior class. Okay. Is this correct? Yes. Okay. And if needed, can I give a give you a call or send you an email? If there's follow up questions, okay. Thank you. Great. Anything more? Reflection and summary of meeting. Next steps for board members. Dorothy, thank you very much. Um, I'm afraid we did not finish before nine o'clock. But um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anybody has anything else? Just want to thank all of you very much, as always, and look forward to seeing you next time. Um, you know, I have a comment. Um, yeah. This setup, and maybe you should be here, seems much more um, engaging than what we had at Dodie, because I thought Dodie went too far apart mm -hmm. and increased mm -hmm. too much space in between, and, and the audience members too. So, um, wherever we are, um, just I'm going to have to have more, a closer quarters um, just because really I think it's easier to talk to each other and hear each other and that it fills the distance. Mm -hmm. and I just mm -hmm. I yeah. couldn't agree more. Yeah. 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 Doing meetings in gyms, like we could, the Doty Library is small, we could have done it there. Yeah. Then, uh, or one of the classrooms with yeah. bigger yeah. furniture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The five, six classrooms have furniture that's a little bigger than the mm -hmm. kindergarten and first grade. Or like it tell us, I think we could use a music room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there's not a whole lot of stuff there. Right. Mm -hmm. I like the library at Calico. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it, but yeah. it's hard to have a very yeah, spacious. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. The music room might be good. Yeah. No. Sure, we'll explore other options. Thank you. And also, um, there have been suggestions that we um, purchase or procure a speaker system so that people can hear one another and the audience can hear us. So we're looking into looking at amplifiers and microphones for us for the future and whatever we purchase it'll be portable so we can bring it with you wherever you go. Or we could be the examples of what not to do in a public speaking class in 32. <laughs> <laughs> you just be got more and make sure audience can do that.
<laughs> yeah, well, in a room like this, here, nice. right? It, but in a room like this, with a lower ceiling, you know, the acoustics are much better, yeah. as we know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. So, um, if there's nothing else, shall we adjourn by consensus? Yes. At nine oh nine oh eight. Thank you.